people in our state with deferred action temporary relief, also known as DREAMers, who are authorized to stay here and obtain work permits, but our state is refusing to allow them to apply for a driver's license. In Nebraska, we all know it can be hard or nearly impossible to get to work without a car. Why would we want to limit their ability to work and to contribute to our state's economy? LB 623 attempts to rectify a situation that occurred when former Governor Heinemann directed the Department of Motor Vehicles to deny driver's licenses to deferred action for childhood arrival youth, or DACA youth. The state's legal argument is that DACA does not provide lawful status. However, immigration experts agree that our state's policy of withholding a driver's license to a select few deferred action immigrants is arbitrary and capricious. Currently, under the REAL ID Act, the federal law, which 60-484.04 uh, implemented in Nebraska, deferred action is considered lawful status for purposes of issuing driver's licenses. The legislature last touched driver's license statutes in 2008 in order to implement the federal REAL ID law. We fully intended uh, the statute to track the federal law, which is why our current law, 60-484.04, uh, says applicants for driver's license must present valid documentary evidence that he or she has lawful status. One example of the appropriate evidence is uh, subsection E, an employment authorization document, an EAD, issued by the United States Department of Homeland Security. DACA recipients have an employment authorization document. Uh, they have a social, a social security card as well. The Department of Homeland Security has issued both of these documents to DREAMers, but the Department of Motor Vehicles has been turning those with these appropriate documents away. DREAMers are not citizens, but they are lawfully present. Nebraska allows many other non-citizens to have driver's licenses. We allow asylum seekers to drive. We allow people with temporary protected status to drive. We allow those with deferred enforcement departure to drive. And we allow those who have applied for adjustment of status to drive. Dreamers are the only category of work permit holders, employment authorization holders, the only category who we do not allow to get a driver's license in Nebraska. And we are the only state that does not allow dreamers to drive. Truly, this is this policy is arbitrary and capricious, and this policy needs to change. There is a lawsuit pending against the state on behalf of dreamers who have work permits and social security numbers but are refused a driver's license. However, it's not necessary to have that lawsuit. This is why I've introduced LB 623. I want dreamers to have a license so they can get to college classes, get to jobs, internships, get to church and medical appointments. Many of these young in, uh, immigrants in Nebraska were brought here only as infants and toddlers when they came to the U.S. and have lived here nearly their entire lives. They consider Nebraska their home. As Nebraska taxpayers, we have invested tens of thousands of dollars in their K-12 education and their higher education uh, for the nearly 2,700 DACA youth that are in our state. These are well-educated young adults that are making significant contributions to their local economy, but they certainly have the potential to do more. And we have the potential as taxpayers to lose out on that investment, that education investment we have made in them because they have 49 other options across the country to go to uh, to get a driver's license and to participate in those economies. But they love Nebraska. They view Nebraska as their home. The personal stories of DACA youth are compel compelling. Kimball, Nebraska resident Laura Flores is a DACA recipient and a freshman at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln as a pre-law and political science major. In her testimony on this bill, she said not having a driver's license creates barriers for her to perform daily routines, such as attending class, reaching her job, attending church and medical appointments. Maria Flores also testified at the hearing and told her story. She said, when I was a child, my family decided to move from Mexico to Omaha, Nebraska, where I now call home. Although it was a difficult transition, especially in school, I was actively involved in multiple clubs where I'm president and even wrote for the school newspaper. After high school, I went on to receive a major in sociology from Bellevue University with the help of scholarships and funds. When the deferred
Deferred Action Program was announced in 2012, I was excited to know that I would gain opportunities to succeed in my life. My plan was to go into social work upon graduating in 2010, but unfortunately I haven't been able to because a driver's license is required for that field. There have been times where I have considered leaving the state out of frustration, but this is my home. More than anything, I feel disappointed to know that I was able to get a higher education, but I'm still limited uh, to the opportunities because I cannot obtain a driver's license. Aside from not being able to pursue my career as a mother, I seek to provide my children everything they need. It is essential for me to get around without having to depend on others for rides when I need to go to school or medical appointments. I'm a mom, a community leader, business owner, mentor, and volunteer at heart. I've had many blessings here in Nebraska and I want to stay here, but sometimes I wonder if it would not be easier in another state. Denying driver's license to DACA youth makes it difficult for them to meet even their basic needs, especially in greater Nebraska. This bill has broad bipartisan support and support from a number of groups, including the Chambers of Commerce in Omaha, Lincoln, and the state, the Catholic Archdiocese of Omaha, the Catholic Conference, uh, the League of Women Voters, the League of Municipalities, the Fraternal Order of Police, the Nebraska Retail Federation, Restaurant Association, Nebraska Cattlemen, uh, Mayor Gene Stothard from Omaha has come out in support of the bill, um, as well as newspapers in Lincoln, Scott's Bluff, Kearney, and Grand Island have all written editorials in support of the bill. I certainly want to thank uh, Senator McAllister for his strong advocacy on this bill and for making it his priority bill and also I want to thank Senator Smith and the Transportation Committee for their consideration of this bill and I would appreciate the body's support of this. It is sound public policy and the right pathway forward for, for Nebraska. Mr. Speaker, how much time do I have left? Three minutes and five seconds. I'll yield the remainder of my time to Senator McAllister. Senator McAllister, you yielded three minutes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Senator Norquist for bringing this bill. Uh, during the course of uh, uh, developing this bill, I've become a strong proponent, and I, I think it's in the best interest of the state. As you will uh, soon hear, Senator Gurney will have an amendment, and I, I think uh, this amendment will attempt to put a special imprint on the license to thus make it possible to uh, detect a, a, a DACA applicant for a driver's license. And I would uh, like to reference uh, DMV Director, former DMV Director Rhonda Lamb and National Safety Council uh, CEO Beverly Ricks. And she indicates that there is no need to include DACA status identification on a state-issued driver's license. The DACA status is currently valid for a two-year time period, so the license issued to a DACA youth would include the expiration date that is a two years from the initial date of the deferred action status. So we have to wonder why uh, the state would be put to an unnecessary expense and trouble uh, is reissuing, reissuing special driver's license to DACA uh, applicants. Secondly, when a DACA application is requested by an individual for the first time, citizenship is determined. Every applicant is required to state if he or she is not a citizen. This will eliminate a lot of confusion and uh, it it would also indicate if somebody uh, indicated an a incorrect or an untruthful answer, it would be referred, be referred to the fraud division. Secondly, a citizen would provide a birth certificate, passport, or other approved document. A non-citizen would also provide a document issued to him by the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service. The DMV driver's license system is programmed to remove the voter registration data fields when the applicant indicates his or her citizenship status. As we'll soon hear, uh, the Secretary of State John Gale also indicates that uh, potential for voter fraud is very unlikely, very unlikely. Finally, I'll reiterate that the person attempting to use the uh, driver's license and answers questions incorrect uh, would be referred to the fraud division if uh